uh, have thought about why clowns exist in the first place? Like, is it just to make us laugh like a comedian or is there something else going on? And I expect you haven't thought, ask yourselves why clowning is, I think becoming more popular and more widespread right now as a practice internationally. And my organization, Clown Spirit, our mission is to help people translate clowning into their everyday lives. We're seeing so many new people coming into our community every day. There's something in the air. The world needs more clowns. My own first experience of clowning was in 2000 with the Canadian teacher, Sue Morrison. There was this one exercise where you had to bring an object that was special, or meaningful to you in some way. And you just had to connect with the feeling that that object brought up in you and then allow that feeling to be shared with the audience. Now, at the time I was really suffering uh, from a, a recent breakup in a relationship. And I brought the, my object with, was this stack of postcards that were well, love letters really that had been sent to me over a number of years by my ex. So there I was in front of the other workshop participants holding this stack of postcards in my hands, not knowing what to do. And I looked down at them and my chin started to wobble. I started to feel like I was about to cry. But there was also this resistance, like a kind of determination to be strong. And the teacher told me to go deeper into the feeling, to follow my impulses. So I got more intense, more defiant, more upset, and I started to cry. But the tears and the grief were mingled with this kind of petulant, childish frustration. It was a building storm of emotions. And I, and I guess the contradiction was funny on my face that people could see it and people started to laugh. And finally something had to blow and almost without thinking about it, I just started ripping up these postcards into pieces. Like as if tearing up the postcard would solve my problem, would make me feel better, you know, like taking out my anger on something. And it's such a human thing we can resonate with and yet so ridiculous. I tore them into smaller and smaller pieces and started bounding around the room, creating this kind of dance of confetti flying everywhere and me like stomping them on the ground and grinding them into the floor. And people were just falling around with, with laughter at this ridiculousness. And then suddenly it was all over and I felt this kind of calmness. And I just looked at these pieces of paper everywhere and breathed. And I left the space with a final look at the audience to say, as if to say goodbye to the relationship. And the memory that's left with me is this essence of what clowning is, this feeling that this power that clowning has, that you can take things we think of as negative, like grief, shame, fear, and you can, you can pack them into a, a five minute ritual that reveals something new about the human experience and the ridiculousness of, of being human, but also does honor to the depth, the reality of what it is to be human. But more than that, it actually transformed me. It did more to help me overcome my grief around that relationship than many hours in therapy. There's, a, there's an anthropologist from the 1940s, 30s and 40s called Lucille Charles, who studied clowns cross-culturally, especially many of the indigenous clown traditions. And she wrote, um, I remember this is in the 30s and 40s, so that, forgive the pronouns, which are very male. The clown is a priest performing a rite both on his own and on our behalf. And what is this rite? It is the locating, naming, bringing to a head and expressing of a psychological element which has been causing trouble in the unconscious a renegade element which for the sake of self-integration and further progress in personal living should be brought up to the consciousness, released to a certain extent, experienced and consciously related to. Clowns, she also said this, clowns play with fire, but they are not the fire. And I think this could easily be translated into clowns play with shit, but are not the shit. And that's kind of the topic of my little 10 minute talk today is the composting the shit, how clowns do this. In fact, clowns from many, many cultures and traditions around the world love to play with shit, literal shit in some cases, and pretend like mud simulations of shit, but also piss, 
sweat, blood, other bodily excretions and bodily functions. They love to play with the taboos and break the rules, partly to demonstrate the importance of the rules, right? I mean, demonstrating, teaching us that shit is actually not good to spend a lot of time around. But there's something deeper going on here. The shit is the thing that metaphorically we are ashamed of, the thing we want to flush away, to hide. And yet it's just a part of who we are. It's normal, it's natural. What if we were able to deal a little better with it, to use it in a constructive way, as many people are finding ways to literally compost their shit? Metaphorically, our shit is our shame. And like shit, shame is toxic if it's not processed. Once it's composted, the same shit can become a rich, fertile soil for beautiful things to grow. Clowning in its simplest form is to stand in one's own shit. Just stand in a ridiculous looking costume, maybe a no red nose and do almost nothing, but just to be seen in one's complete naked ridiculousness. You have to plumb your shit. You have to dig it up. You have to shovel the shit. And the far reaches of your internal plumbing system where it's been hidden away for years. And when it comes up, it's painful and smelly. But when you get in front of people, you start to find ways to play with that shit, to hold it out in front of you, right? Not to be it, but to play with it, like the fire. You realize that it can't hurt you. And you realize that it's not you. It's not defining who you are. It's something you've, you've acquired something that's been put on you. You spent years identifying with it as if it were your shit only. And then you realize it's not. And then it becomes a little less of a burden. The thing that makes clowning different from being on a therapist's couch is that you're finding a way to transform that shit into something beautiful, like let's say an image or an object or a poem, a joke, a gag. And once you've done the work of shoveling the shit, you share it. The act of clowning breaks down the molecular structure of the shame in the same way that composting breaks down the molecular structure of shit, allowing those microbes to start digesting the toxins in their own way, shitting out something else. Everything goes through the intestines and when it comes out the other side, it's creatively transmogrified. The shit travels down those little tubes of connection like the mycelium of connecting roots and it strengthens the webs and connections between, pe between people because people suddenly feel that they're not alone. And those people who witness your clowning, of course, have their own shit. And the act of you sharing your shit allows them to share their shit and to compost their shit in a small way. It lightens their load and brings some some nutritious, nourishing dirt for them. When I was young, I was angry. I would have these temper tantrums that were also a cause of shame. In fact, I would be punished in my school for those outbreaks, those outbursts, which were really just a defensive reaction to being teased. But I was made to feel bad, to feel wrong. I was told as a child I was volatile. When I started clowning, I realized that that angry little boy, that volatile creature was quite funny when I started to play it fully without judgment in, ex in an exaggerated way, not identifying fully with it, but by playing and not being it, the anger was composted, transformed into fun, joy, play, connection, love. The shit became nutritious soil. Clowning is a long process and it can be difficult, but there are, there are ways to access some of these moments of composting one's shit through clowning without going through an extensive clown training. And I offer small exercises uh, that do this. One involves identifying some cause of anger or shame, finding an image or an object that seems to represent that thing, and then learning to finding ways to play with that image or object either imaginatively or in, in the real space. And this kind of expressing of the shame in the space and then the sharing of that with an audience can be very powerful. Mm -hmm.